Um, so first of all, I was told I should say two sentences about who I am so you know who's talking to you. Um, basically, I've been across the whole landscape of uh, the written, printed, mediated word. I've written about 20 novels, science fiction, fantasy, uh, genre stuff. Uh, my new novel came out three weeks ago. Please go buy it. Multiple copies. Uh, I've done television for uh, BBC, PBS, Disney, Sci-Fi Channel. Uh, I've done about 20 video games um, for major companies, starting with Seventh Guest uh, a couple of decades ago before I was born. And culminating recently in Doom 3 and Rage. Uh, so that's a little bit about where I'm coming from. Um, and if Asta is the queen of transmedia, I'm the Hannibal Lecter of transmedia. So uh, <laughs> uh, I'm not even sure what that means, but it seems like a good line to say. Uh, so uh, within the uh, seven minutes or so, or eight minutes or so I have, I'm going to be throwing some words at you that are important to me, which are going to sound much less logical than what uh, Senor Frank was presenting. Um, but we're coming at from different ends, and actually we do converge and meet. And I'm going to look at a past... Am I talking too fast? Because I'm from Brooklyn. <laughs> no? Okay. Because Brooklyn people, got that, my accent will kick in too. Uh, so um, I'm going to look at a past process and sort of take you back in time to something I did and then look at a current process and show you the words that were important for me in doing that project. Now the past process started six years ago. The project that it resulted in came out three weeks ago. All right, so this is, that's, that's the arc of it. And so I have the pad here so I can remember what the words are. So the past process is, I had done a project for a company called id, called Doom 3. They had this massive franchise, they didn't have a world, they never worked with a writer, they brought me in. I worked with them to create the world for their game for Doom 3, which came out, I guess, like three, four years ago. So they were ready, um, six years ago, they were ready to start do, working on a new IP. And uh, in a little bit of contrast to what Frank was saying, from the very beginning, they wanted this IP to stretch across the media spectrum, which is unusual for a game company. Usually, they want to make games. And TV producers who I work with, they want to make TV shows. And book publishers, most of them, that's changing though. Trust me in the book thing. Um, book publishers wanted to simply publish books. So this from the very beginning, they w and they brought me out there to work in Mesquite, Texas for three or four days where 80% of the people are packing heat. By heat, I mean, this is Texas, they all have guns. And every female has a gun, because you never know. Again, it's Texas. Just so if you go there, you know what's going to happen. Uh, and so what did I do? So the first word I'll sh uh, say is I went in open. I went in with nothing. I was sort of like what the, like Wagner's perfect fool. I was Parsifal. I just went in, I was there to absorb the ether. So what did I do? I saw their new engine, the new game engine and what it could do. I played with it. Um, I, I just fooled around and, and got a feel for what this new game engine could do. I met the team. What turns you on? What excites you? You like science fiction? I've written science fiction. What stories excite you? And we'd, we'd go out for beers. And don't ever minimize the importance of that downtime when you go out and just hang and you get to know someone. Because it's the inner person that will tell you, because they're going to be working the project for five, six years. What's their passion? What turns them on? So when that was all done, I would get, went to the bubble and started experimenting with different ideas to feed into a new IP that would become their world. And I presented them initially some cautiously, like two or three possibilities. Iterative process, got a reaction, so I'm still not married to anything. And then when we had a vision, and the vision was a post-apocalyptic world, asteroid, a lot of other science fiction components that would feed into the Rage universe, I started writing. And I built the Bible. Now, if you're from the television universe, you probably know about a Bible. It's a little bit different because in a TV, you can focus on characters, you can focus on scripts, story. A game Bible is going to be a little bit different because you're also going to deal with gameplay, interaction. What, what can their engine do? Is it good for driving? Which it is. Is it also good for shooting? Which it is. Is it good for like dialogue, role play, characters? And it is. That's a very versatile engine they had. So the Bible had to reflect all those things. So it was a massive document. Great fun to create. And the best thing is there was no tech. It was just hitting keys, hitting keys. Then back to Texas, where everybody has a gun. Sharing that, getting the feedback, getting the results, and going forward. And then six years later, 
after much back and forth and iterative process. So there's that, that well, I forgot one of the words, so let me just go back and say, I went in open, I tapped into people's passion, experimented. I mean, be, you got to avoid paradigms. Just say it could be this, be that, just leave very open, and then build. You're going to pick one of those things that most seems to fit it. This, you, may, you may back off it, start building something. So when that was done, they started making the game. I did the dialogue. I did the scripting. Three weeks ago, it came out. Does Breaking Bad play over here? And so it was rather extraordinary. I'm watching Breaking Bad like an innocent human being one night, and all of a sudden, the lead, one of the characters, Jesse, who's completely gone and crystal meth, I think, he's playing Rage in, in Breaking Bad. So, and I said, wow, to go from talking in a room with programmers and developers and artists, and, and there it is on television being used in this, in this program in New York taxi cabs. So very exciting. So let me get back to the idea where I said it was designed to straddle media. I think so far I haven't said the T word. Anyone checking me yet? Have. I have? Damn. Snap. Okay, so I said it. Uh, okay, so I can say it again. No, I won't say it again. Uh, so it was designed to feed, so it, it obviously fed into a triple A game, console game, big expensive proposition, and their days may be numbered, by the way. That's an interesting thing that's happening as well. Fed into a ca uh, casual game. Very compelling, interesting, exciting, casual game. It also led to a prequel comic book series, all feeding off the Bible, and also led to a novel, which I wrote. So I wrote the game, and I wrote the novel, which makes sense because I'm a novelist, primarily. If you ask me what I want in my tombstones, is Matt Costello, novelist. He also did transmedia. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and just one last point about this, What's, what is the difference between using the Bible for the novel and using the Bible for the game? Here's the difference. In the game, the point of view, it's you. So when I took my adult 31-year-old son to play Rage during the press preview, and he's playing it, all of a sudden, he's walking, I think he was maybe driving around a corner in the game, something jumps out, he goes like that. He actually got scared. He told me later, he says, I haven't played video games in a while, Dad. That was a spooky moment, right? I didn't have to put any emotion in. He had his own emotional reaction to it. In the novel, I had to take that point of view character. I had to create a person living in Brooklyn. Brother died in the Mideast. He's out of the army in a bar. Someone comes to pick him up. That's the beginning of his adventure. Create a real character you care about in this game universe and yet they both feed off the same document. And so I would say to whatever your project is, putting the time and creating this kind of document is absolutely precious and invaluable. Okay, and then a few words, I haven't been watching time at all, where am I? Okay, a few words about present. I was actually gonna tell you the na name of the company I'm doing the, this current project with, but then I realized it's under NDA and I really shouldn't say the name, but let me tell you what kind of company it is. They've created something brand new brand new. It's in the genre of Facebook and Google, Google Plus groups, LinkedIn, but it's really nothing like those things at all. It's brand new. Their mission is, how do we let the world know? How do, what, what's our compelling killer app to get people to come in? So same process. I went and started uh, with partners I'm working with, which Neil Richards, Frank knows, and Merrick Walton. We went, we played with it. We went and started toying with it and saying, what could we do with this to create something compelling? Then we had a lot of ideas. The idea we eventually went with fed off something from the 1930s. What's old is new again. And I can't tell you what it is from the 1930s that I had written about once, and I said this could actually transform into current, could be the thing that transforms this medium. Could make it ultimately for successful, as well known a year from now as Facebook or LinkedIn or any of those things. Then we present the vision to them, which is the other word. So if you keep track of words, I'm saying play comes up again. Multiple ideas, experimenting. Vision, present the vision to them. And here comes the point, Frank spoke about pitching. You gotta convey your vision to the person and you'll see in their eyes, you'll see how they react. Are you connecting? Is, is it just your vision or are they actually responding to it? In this case, they got it. They bought, they bought into us, they bought into our idea, and it was a leap of faith because we're doing something that hasn't been done before. And at that point, they funded phase one, 
and we moved to the next level, moving into we're actually developing phase two, much bigger, and I'm going to go back, we're going to start working on it over the next couple of months. Will it work? And here's the key question. It kind of, kind of goes back to, you know, Frank and I sort of, as I said, we intersect. In, in this particular case, will this work? Will this put this thing, which I almost just said, on the map? I don't know. And to me, that's pretty exciting. The fact that I'm excited by it, they're excited by it, it has the potential to put them on the map. I do not have a guarantee it's going to do that. But we're going to go forward and doing something that hasn't been done. So you're not always going to say, yes, we can have everything figured out. We know for sure we're covered. I think sometimes, artistically, creatively, you say, we're going to take that leap of faith. And um, we'll find out whether it works. So those are some of the keywords I use when I'm in the process. The current thing that I'm just doing, which I can't really talk about, feeds off the same process I went through with Rage. Uh, and I would suggest that as you go forward, keep, keep them in mind because they've been very helpful to me over a long and sometimes pretty good career. Thank you.